Fifty years ago, sugar industry quietly paid scientists to point blame at fat. In the 1960s, the sugar industry funded research that downplayed the risks of sugar and highlighted the hazards of fat, according to a newly published article in JAMA Internal Medicine. The article draws on internal documents to show that an industry group called the Sugar Research Foundation wanted to refute concerns about sugar's possible role in heart disease. The SRF then sponsored research by Harvard scientists that did just that. The result was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 1967 with no disclosure of the sugar industry funding. The sugar-funded project in question was a literature review examining a variety of studies and experiments. It suggested there were major problems with all the studies that implicated sugar and concluded that cutting fat out of American diets was the best way to address coronary heart disease. The authors of the new article say that for the past five decades, the sugar industry has been attempting to influence the scientific debate over the relative risks of sugar and fat. It was a very smart thing the sugar industry did because review papers, especially if you get them published in a very prominent journal, tend to shape the overall scientific discussion, co-author Stanton Glantz told the New York Times. Money on the line. In the article, published Monday, authors Glantz, Kristen Kearns, and Laura Schmidt aren't trying to make the case for a link between sugar and coronary heart disease. Their interest is in the process. They say the documents reveal the sugar industry attempting to influence scientific inquiry and debate. The researchers note that they worked under some limitations. We cannot interview key actors involved in this historical episode because they have died, they write. Other organizations were also advocating concerns about fat, they note. There's no evidence that the SRF directly edited the manuscript published by the Harvard scientist in 1967, but there is circumstantial evidence that the interests of the sugar lobby shaped the conclusions of the review, the researchers say. For one thing, there's motivation and intent. In 1954, the researchers note, the president of the SRF gave a speech describing a great business opportunity. If Americans could be persuaded to eat a lower fat diet for the sake of their health, they would need to replace that fat with something else. America's per capita sugar consumption could go up by a third. But in the 60s, the SRF became aware of flowing reports that sugar is a less desirable dietary source of calories than other carbohydrates, as John Hickson, SRF Vice President, Director of Research, put it in one document. He recommended that the industry fund its own studies. Then we can publish the data and refute our detractors. The next year, after several scientific articles were published suggesting a link between sucrose and coronary heart disease, the SRF approved the literature review project. It wound up paying approximately $50,000 in today's dollars for the research. One of the researchers was the chairman of Harvard's Public Health Nutrition Department and an ad hoc member of SRF's board. Is it really true that food companies deliberately set out to manipulate research in their favor? Yes, it is, and the practice continues. In 2015, the New York Times obtained emails revealing Coca-Cola's cozy relationships with sponsored researchers who were conducting studies aimed at minimizing the effects of sugary drinks on obesity. Even more recently, the Associated Press obtained emails showing how a candy trade association funded and influenced studies to show that children who eat sweets have healthier body weights than those who do not. As for the article, authors who dug into the documents around this funding, they offer two suggestions for the future. Policymaking committees should consider giving less weight to food industry funded studies, they write. They also call for new research into any ties between added sugars and coronary heart disease.